everybody, Ted the Butcher, back again with yet another episode of On the Block. Today we're talking one last time about the beef top round. Now, what we did in previous episodes, you can see here we've got our, our top round steak, which is uh, perfect for London broiling. Those of you who watched the episode, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's a little bit of an inside joke. Watch the episode. Anyway, got our top round steaks here, got our top round roasts right here, right? Nice and tied, ready to rock. Ready to rock in the oven, and uh, and that's that's what we did with most of that piece. But but what what is this, Ted? Ted, tell me what to do with these trimmings. I can hear you. I can hear you saying that through the YouTubes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is exactly what I'm going to do today. So, all right, we have these nice pieces of meat that we cut off uh, of the top round. If you check out the other episodes, you can see how we got them. Uh, and where we cut them from, uh, that's basically, uh, so this one here is the, the front cap of that top round. This one was on the side, and this was the back. Can you see how we did it? We had some nice meat right in here, which is became these beautiful products that you see over there. So anyway, um, why did we cut them off? Well, the reason is because uh, these this, this top round comes from those big, thick muscles uh, of the hind quarter of the beef, right? Of the, cow, the cow's leg, cow's hind quarter. Uh, lots going on back there. Lots of big, strong muscles. Not a lot of intramuscular fat. Lots of veins. Lots of uh, bones and, and, and uh, membrane and things like that. And when you get this piece nice and whittled down, some of that stuff will end up on the meat. And as a butcher, what we do is trim that off and make sure that we're giving you the best parts uh, as opposed to anything that might you might be chewing for a week or so. However, uh, what we can do now uh, is is to take these parts uh, and and trim them down a little bit so they are usable, they are functional. And one great thing we can do with this is trim it down into stir fry. Um, it's not a great cut to stew because there isn't a lot of fat in it. That's something that's that's actually even better uh, with the muscles in the neck and towards the front of the animal. Uh, those tend to be better for stews and stuff. But these sirloin pieces in here, uh, anything you might use like for uh, uh, like so sirloin cubes for like a fondue, um, stir fries, things like that. Anything that requires some nice pieces of a lean sirloin that you're going to cook quick, maybe in a hot pan. Uh, those are those are great applications for some of the trimmings that you get out of a top round. Also, let's not forget. Uh, any of these pieces are good for like lean grind, so something like a ground sirloin or a ground round. Uh, you know, once we trim out some of these fatty pieces uh, and some of these membranes right here, uh, we can run those through a grinder and make a great lean ground beef. Uh, also, if you add some fat to it, you know, you can grind that up and make it uh, add a little more fat, a little more flavor. You can add uh, pork or veal to it if you're doing sausages and meatloaves. So a lot of options with the stuff that we've we've trimmed off right here. So don't ever discard it because there's so much you can do with it, all right? And a lot of times also, I'm, I'm, I'm just going on, right? This is such a versatile uh, group of trimming uh, pieces of beef that we can trim here. Um, that's exactly what happens in in a, in a bigger store, or any butcher shop, right? So we're gonna have trimmings, we're gonna have, you know, I'll call them waste products. Uh, you know, they are products that are caught off the top round. Uh, that doesn't mean they're not good, but they are, are waste and they take away from the yield of this beef. So a way a butcher will monetize these cuts is by finding other things to do with them, such as stir fry, such as fondue cubes. That's where you get a lot of these pieces, obviously ground beef. That's where a lot of that comes from is, is the trimmings off of bigger and larger pieces. So when you get something like this, let's work with this side here. There's some sinew right in there, some big thick membrane. You know, you want to cut those kinds of things off, right? You can discard them. You know, try to keep as much meat on there as you as you can uh, for whatever your application may be. We flip that over to the bottom. You know, you have these these kind of big wads of fat uh, and some some tendon in there, uh, connective tissue. You know, some of the meat isn't going to be all that salvageable. But, you know, we can take that off uh, and get start just whittling this down and finding some of the good parts. Now here, we have a big old vein running through there. We can get our knife underneath that. We don't want that, right? We don't want that in our grind or in our stir fry or on our plate, right? That's, that's no good. But So we're going to go just work through these seams and take it. 
take it right off as you work through. Don't worry too much about about the waste. Um, you know, you're just going to work through, and you're going to get what you can out of it. Now. This is a good time to use the smaller knife. You know, I take the big pieces off as much as I can. But, there, you know, pieces like this, you're going to see seams running through the meat. A seam is basically a place where two pieces of, of this nice muscle come together uh, and you have some connective tissue, some membrane in there. You can use your small knife to seam that out. A lot of what a butcher does is working through these seams and finding good pieces of meat. So as you do that, see what we're going to do here. I'm going to take that knife. I'm going to use this uh, this sort of pistol grit and uh, just work that right through there. Joshua Applestone at Fleischer's, uh, whose book I'm reading, I mentioned that in a previous episode as well, calls this the pistol grit. And it's a good one because you can change the pressure you put on the knife uh, by either kind of pulling on it a little bit like this uh, or, or just sort of... Uh, keeping your, your, the pressure back and letting that tip of that knife do that work. So that's not a bad way to do it. Then also you can do this. Josh Applestone at Fleischer's calls this the surgical grip. So we can go down, work through there, and uh, as you do that, you know, if you're making a stir fry out of this, it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to get this nice and fancy. Uh, but, you know, you, you want to keep the meat together uh, and on the bone and we're just kind of getting rid of the waste so you see that so now we got nice access to this fat right we're pulling that off slowly but surely right discard that as you go we got a nice piece here just cut that right off see we're getting through those membranes connective tissues everything like that peeling that off the meat and we're almost there you know, you can you can kind of pull at this a little bit too. Um, certain pieces that works better than others, but if you need to kind of loosen it up to get your knife in there, that is something uh, where you can kind of pull it a little bit with your fingers. Um, there are applications such as on the filet mignon where we are going to uh, do a little more pulling. Where you really uh, on a nice tender piece like that, you can cut that membrane right off. But uh, on this, just, you know, work your knife through. It takes a little bit of time, a little bit of patience. But when you're done, right, you get some of those fattier pieces off. You get, like, nice, lean pieces of sirloin just like that, right? And that's that's a great piece of meat. You can grind that, but this is awesome uh, if you take it and, and just cut it into little strips, which I'll show you. Take this knife, right? For something like like this piece, maybe a butterfly open. Just get it a little bit flatter there. Doesn't have to be perfect, right? And what you want to do is work across the grain, right? So this one, the grain is running this long way. So it just, you know, that's fine. Just do that so it lays a little bit flatter. And we're going to work across the grain and cut this into some nice little strips for stir fry. This is great because there's not a lot of fat in the muscle or in between the muscle fibers so so these little pieces right here are going to be great to mix with some vegetables and cook them real quick in a hot pan right I mean these things are are literally so so lean and so tender that they you know a couple minutes in a hot pan with some nice vegetables you have a great stir fry and that's a quick easy dinner right so that's basically uh, all you do, if you want to grind this stuff, again, trim it down, you know, keep some of the fat on, but make sure you're you're using the fat and not the silver skins and not the membrane uh, and, and things that aren't really good to eat and things that will, if you have like a KitchenAid grinder at home, you don't want to leave anything on there that's going to get caught up in your grinder. So, you know, again, trim it as, as well as you can and, and go for what you need, but if you're grinding it, you know, you can cut it into bigger pieces like that, I would go, you know, one or uh, you know, one or two, or maybe even three inch cubes. But you don't have to be real pretty with it. It depends on how heavy duty your grinder is and how much that grinder can handle. Leave a little bit of fat on there, as I have with some of those pieces, right? And there you go. I mean, that's just some some great stuff uh, that you can use for uh, for grind. So grind stir fries, things like that. These are wonderful. If you're going to do something like uh, like a fondue, uh, these pieces of sirloin are really good. This one comes off the front uh, of the top round. 
So again, running out of room a little bit here, but uh, all right, I'll take that. So you got these nice pieces, and you can cut them into nice small cubes uh, that you can then use for a nice fondue. We'll go with something a little bit like this. I think the cubes, you want them, when you're doing fondue, it's cooking in that, that liquid, whatever that hot liquid may be. So you want to keep them kind of small, smaller than a stew. I'll get some close-ups of that in a second. But, you know, you're going to just use these nice small cubes, right, for your fondue. And you can use them on the fork. Fondue, very, you know, you may think that uh, the fondue, who does fondue anymore, right? But it's out there. There's some nice restaurants that do it. Uh, so, you know, and, and people do it for dinner parties. It's fun, little retro at this point, uh, and people love it. So there you go, some fondue, some grind, some stir fry, uh, some top rounds, some top round roast. We got it all here on the block. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Ted the Butcher. I'll catch you next time. Okay, so here's a little bit of that close-up action. Now, these are the good cubes uh, for fondue. Now, these are only about like three-quarters of an inch because, again, we're going to use those to cook uh, pretty quickly. This is something, again, as I said, you wouldn't want to use... Uh, Oh, let me move that in a little bit closer. You wouldn't want to use something this lean for stew, but just for a size comparison, uh, you know, this is the type of this is the type of piece you would you would use for a stew. Something something bigger, something this size, and a fondue by comparison is going to be like that. All right. So so that's basically the difference uh, between the size of these cubes or that, and then and that is the size of the cube you would want for an application like fondue.